What's up guys? Today I wanna to talk about the Google Pixel 5a. So let's get to it. So I received the Google Pixel 5a the other day. And let me start by saying this is not a sponsor video. Uh, I have received it for free. Google did send it out to me to take a look at, to review, but my thoughts and my opinions are my own. They're not paying me to say anything. Google has not seen this video before you guys have. So let's get started with a quick unboxing. So comes in a basic box like everything else. Um, Pixel 5a on the front, 5G and hashtag team pixel and looking at the back you have these quick open tabs here kind of like that about google i don't have to break out a knife you just go ahead and peel these off the back and boom the box is open so let's see what's inside so right away on top you get the the pixel and the 5a right now comes in one color they call it mostly black, but looking at it, to me, it looks like <laughs> mostly green. It's a kind of a, uh, a shade of shade of green, almost like a military dark green. Um, I don't know why they call it mostly black, because really it's mostly green. You can see the small fingerprint scanner on the back there. Two cameras, let's set that aside. Of course, you get your SIM card removal key, instruction manual. That doesn't really tell you much. Just how to I'm sure how to turn it on. You know how to turn turn on the cell phone by now. Um, go ahead and read the instruction manual if you need it. But most of us just throw that stuff to the side. Right now, Google is still including chargers with their phone. I don't know about the Pixel Six if it'll have a charger, but right now the Pixel. 5a has this pretty actually hefty size charger it's kind of big compared to uh, what chargers are usually are nowadays but um, also you get this USB adapter here let's pull this out you get a USB let's pull that up there USB a to USB C adapter um, my last phone, I had the Pixel 4 XL. Pixel 4 XL was the last Pixel that I bought. I did not get the Pixel 5, but it also came with a USB A to C adapter. I'm not sure how many people need that, but I guess if you, for whatever reason, need that, you have it. And of course, USB-C cable to charge up the, the phone. And that's basically it. I mean, phones don't tend to come up with a lot of stuff in the box nowadays. So yeah, let's get this charged and see what this looks like. Okay guys, so I did start the setup process. Uh, it is gonna take a while. It took about 10 minutes to, um, just to hook the phone up to, hook the Pixel up to my old Pixel. It transferred some of the apps and uh, account settings and things like that. But right now it is, finishing the download so it's downloading all the apps that's needed and once that's done I'll be able to go ahead and do some testing of the camera and see just how much I like the phone but right now I can tell you the phone is super super light maybe it's because I've been used to the pixel the pixel 4 XL and I also use the iPhone 12 max pro so that's a much heavier phone I'm liking I forget how much I like the smaller phones how much I like having something lighter in my pockets. Uh, it's been a while since I had something like this, but so far it's it's nice. Um, I'm getting used to the color. Like I said, I thought it'd be more black since the name is mostly black, but you know, I'm, I don't mind the green. And to be honest with you, what I'll do with most of my phones, I put a case on it uh, just to help protect the phone because I'm clumsy sometimes I drop the phone and I'm not about buying new phones when my screens crack things like that so I have no problem just buying a $20 case for my phone so right now I'm gonna tell you the phone the the buttons the buttons are similar Let's see you guys can see that buttons are similar to the previous pixel uh, like I said I have the pixel 4 XL I don't know about the pixel 5 but I'm sure it's not much of a difference uh, the button placement is 
the same as before. Um, let me see what I can find. Where did I put that? I grabbed the Pixel 4 XL for comparison. So the button placement is the same. You got your volume rocker here on the side and just below the power button. And the buttons seem almost identical in size. So you can get that much closer for you guys. The buttons are pretty much identical in size. And um, the phone is 6.3 inches, I believe. And you can see it's not much difference in size. They always sound bigger or smaller than what they actually are. Just looking at that compared to the 4XL, it's just a little bit smaller, but it's definitely a lot lighter. I'm happy about the fingerprint sensor on the back. I don't know why everyone's gone away from that. I guess a lot of people like the face unlock or the fingerprint sensor being in the glass, but I'm a big fan of having it right there on the back. It just seems like a natural position to me. I, you know, when I hold my phone, I tend to place it right here on the, my finger right here on the back anyway. Quickly unlocks the phone. Show you how quick that is. I mean, it is super fast. I prefer that, but I guess a lot of people don't. But anyway, I'm happy to have it back. A lot of people might be excited to see the return of the headphone jack. So there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the top there. Um, my Pixel 4 XL did not have that. I'm not sure about the Pixel 5, but if you're happy about headphone jack, then be excited because it's back. And of course, at the bottom, you have your USB-C and speakers. This is the Pixel 4 or Pixel 5A. So you have a USB-C charger and your bottom stereo speakers. So not a huge design change, but it's welcome for me. The SIM card, I don't know if that matters for you, any of you. The SIM card tray is on the side as opposed to the Pixel 4 XL. It's also on the side, but much higher. Let's so get a little bit closer for y'all so you can see that. So you can see it's down here on the side, but that never really mattered to me at all. So once all my apps are finished downloading, getting everything downloaded now, once the apps are finished downloading, I'm gonna do some camera tests, see what the camera's like. So let's finish the downloads and we'll go try that. I'm gonna test out the various video modes to see how it affects the image. Uh, the, Pixel, the Pixel 5a has a couple video modes. It has a slow motion mode that's built in um, there's also a cinematic slow motion mode. So I kind of want to test that out and see what it does um, to audio, but also how it works with the image stabilization. And then there's the regular 4K 60 that a lot of people would shoot with. It's something I would probably shoot with before having these options, but I want to try them out. I can tell you right now, I've, sh I've shot just a little bit of video so far. And from what I can tell, from what I see, it looks like there's some lagginess on the screen when you're shooting. I'm not sure that will show up in the actual video. Can't wait to get back to the studio to find out um, how that works or how it looks. But um, also this is what the audio sounds like when you're out and about. I'm in my local park, so it's a little bit windy, not too windy. You probably hear a little breeze coming across the microphone. Typically, if I were to shoot a vlog, I would wear some sort of wireless mic, but I want to give you some of you guys a idea of what the audio sounds like if you're just going to use the microphone from the pixel 5a so yeah let's go so right now i'm walking with the just the normal stabilization the standard is what they call it just walking around my local park here and looking at it it seems pretty smooth i mean no gimbal no uh tripod no selfie stick none of that just straight handheld do a quick turn quick pan no special walking no crab walk or anything like that and now i'll try it with the active this is the active stabilization 
Again, not walking any way, any special kind of way. Um, just walking my normal way. Kind of got a little bounce to it, <laughs> to my walk. But also, this is what the mic sounds like with no, uh, no external microphone. It's not too windy of a day, but um, it is kind of loud because we have cicadas where we are. So you guys can probably hear that. There's a crap ton of ducks and um, can't wait to get get back home and see how this looks. Um, looking at the screen right now, there's a weird, seems like a, a delay when I pan. Um, it's almost like it locks onto this picture here, of this image here of the ducks. But when I turn, there's a delay before I see the screen start moving like a half a second, quarter of a second. Like it's, it's small, but noticeable to me. This is regular 4K60, handheld of course. The uh, Pixel only does, when it comes to 4K, only does 30 frames a second or 60. And let's try it again with the uh, telephoto lens. Again, 4K60 handheld. I'll do this and then slow it down. So looking at the cinematic pan mode, um, the, first, the first thing I can tell you is that I think it's a good option. It automatically slows down the footage for you. You get slow motion footage without having to to slow it down yourself. The quality of the footage is, isn't too bad at all. Um, the downside is it does not record any audio, which is why I'm doing this vo voiceover for, for this part. But overall, I think it does a pretty good job. So looking at this, this is the slow motion option. You just select slow motion and you have the option to choose between one quarter and one eighth. Um, it does record audio, but the audio is of, of course gonna be super slow motion also. For whatever reason, I'm getting a lot of camera shake here. I'm not sure if it turns off the image stabilization or what the issue is here. I don't think this would be my go-to mode. All right, so what I tried to do is run through a couple different tests because the Google Pixel 5a has a couple of different modes and until you own the camera or until you have the cell phone in your hand maybe you might not understand but let me run quickly run through the modes for you i should have done that before during the test but i'm going to do it now so one of the modes that they have on the camera is called slow motion you basically just hit the button and you can choose between the option of recording in slow motion of one quarter of the speed or one eighth speed slow motion when you select the qu one quarter speed what it's actually doing is recording in 1080p at 120 frames per second and when you select the one eighth speed of the slow motion it's recording at 1080p at 240 frames per second i'm sure in certain lighting conditions it's usable it's 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 something that maybe you can get to work but for me it's not ideal it's not what I would choose, and I want a little more manual control over shooting slow motion, slow motion B-roll, or whatever it might be that you're shooting in slow motion. When you use this mode, it's also recording audio, but that audio is unusable if you're playing the video back at the speed that it was recorded in. So it's recorded in slow motion. The audio itself is gonna be in slow motion. Uh, the good thing is if you need if you happen to be an editor, if you know anything about Premiere or Final Cut or any of those type of programs, you could set, you could take that audio track and speed it up. And so it would be usable if you sped it up four times or eight times, it would be actual norm, normal speed audio. So it's usable, but again, it's this is not the mode that I want because as you can see from the video, it was the lowest quality video. Another mode that you have is called Cinematic Pan. You're able to, to go into the pixel settings, select cinematic pan, and what it does is automatically slow the footage down. So it records the footage at 4K, 60 frames per second, and it automatically slows it down. 
The downside of using the cinematic pan is it records no audio, but the footage itself, it's not bad. It, it's something that's definitely usable from my test anyway. It didn't seem too bad. And for a lot of people, I think they could use this and just get away um, with using that mode just fine. I think the 4K60 is the way to go. You, you can choose the 4K60 and then there are various stabilization modes that you can use. And in the video, I tested 4K60 with using the active stabilization and it's a really aggressive stabilization. It kind of works, but for one thing, it crops in. In order to do this, it has to crop in and it's gonna crop in 1080p. And in my test, it didn't look that good. It didn't, wouldn't be something that I would use. So for me, just using 4K60 with the standard stabilization turned out the best. You, you can't get slow motion video that you can immediately post. It's, it's not something that I guess a beginner would use, but I can take that footage, put it in Premiere or Final Cut or DaVinci or any other editor and slow the footage down. And I think that's the best result. Now, keeping in mind, this isn't Google's top of the line phone. This is just the Pixel 5a. It's their mid range phone. And for a mid range phone doing what it does, I think it does very well. I did take a few pictures. I did um, test the photography aspects of it and as normal google always comes through with the still photo camera the, the shots are just great i won't get into that because this video is more about the video aspects of everything so that's it for me um if you guys have any questions you have any thing that i'm any any tests that i miss just post it in comments below maybe i'll do a follow-up video i'm kind of doing this um for my own interest but i wanted to share it with you guys so that uh, you know what you're getting into if you're thinking of buying the phone and using it to produce videos. So that's it for me. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.